Hi, and welcome back to Pi Simple GUI 2020 Part 6 Beautiful Windows. How many times have you heard the phrase Tkinter sucks or looks ugly or looks like it's from the 90s uh, on Reddit and elsewhere? I, I, I have, and um, I, I'm here to testify that windows do not have to look ugly. They can look nice, in fact. This window and this window were created with Tkinter. I don't think they're ugly. Some people may. They don't have animated buttons and that sort of thing going on, but uh, they're not ugly. One thing is clear though, beautiful windows don't just happen. And in particular, if you're using Tkinter and use the default values and end up with a gray window, you, you don't have room to complain because you've done nothing to try to make your look your, your window look beautiful. It's, it's not a push button experience. Um, if it was, you, you wouldn't have a job as a programmer. Uh, there's a reason graphic designers exist. They figure out how to make colors that match, for example. And one of the things that Pysmo GUI does for you is uh, help you get colors that, that do match. And that is done through themes. And what themes are is a way to automatically color your windows as they are created. So you set a theme and then you create your window. What you cannot do at the moment is create a window and then set a theme and have it change your window. Uh, if you're doing that sort of operation, what you'll need to do is close your window, change the theme, open up a new window, and it'll have the new theme. So what are the choices for themes? Well, you can find that out by calling a function called SGE theme. And you notice right away, there are a lot of theme uh, calls. Those are all documented, but there's a, a theme previewer and uh, you can call that. It um, takes all the themes. It takes a moment to create because uh, there are a lot of elements that go into this preview. Um, in fact, it is a very large preview. There are 140 some themes. Um, the previewer shows them all. Here they all are. Here's the names, the name format. Um, there's a couple of them, but the ones that you that are the standard I start with the word dark or light. Then there's a color that could be blue, purple, gray, green, teal, uh, red, and then a number. And uh, if you're if you're not sure uh, what you want to use, guess and keep guessing until you get a color theme that you like. So let's create a sample window uh, and play around with themes. And this is my uh, test program. I, I talked about live templates earlier with PyCharm. It's Control J. Uh, I made a bunch of them because I make windows a lot. And you can just copy and paste um, something from the cookbook, like one of the two design um, patterns, and use that. So there's a default theme, and it is a gray, I, th I think it's dark blue, something like that. So um, here's the default theme. If I change this to say, uh, I don't know what this is going to look like. Uh, we're going to say dark green four. And I, I run the same program and uh, it will use dark green. And there are multiple aspects that are set with a theme. There's the background color. There's the color of the input box. There's colors of buttons. That's the text and the background. There's the color of the text. There's uh, a, a lot of settings that go into themes and you can modify those at will. Um, so if you don't like one particular part of the theme, you you can change that. Um, here's dark red. Um, I kind of like this theme. It uses a, a white tech for input. Uh, if you didn't like this input color, you can change that by doing SG theme and then it's input text color. And if we wanted to make it yellow, that's what we would do. So we choose a dark red, we change the input to yellow, and now these are yellow characters very handy and if you uh, don't put a parameter then it returns whatever that current setting is in this case it's probably going to be white which is what it is when we print it and if you really want them to experiment and try to find a theme that you want uh, then you can 
uh, you enter in some value that's incorrect and it will dump out a warning message that says your theme is not a valid one change it uh, here's what they are and in the last thing instead please enjoy a random theme named light brown six maybe you like light brown six uh, if not you run your program again with guess it's wrong uh, and this one is called dark blue 11 so you can just cycle through them um, and until uh, you get something you like so that's color let's let's talk about the styling of a window that's where the window call itself comes into play and its many parameters um, let's do keep on top uh, is true so that uh, when we run this let's say we'd like dark red when we run this i'll be able to show you things here and the window will stay on top of pie chart so here is our default window it's got normal window things let's say we want to make it sort of like a rain meter widget and if you're not familiar with rain meter and widgets it's a desktop widgeting package it makes things that look like this for example that you just let run on your desktop and it shows use statistics and that sort of thing you can make those using PySimple GUI and uh, there are some tricks to do that first thing we want to do is let's get rid of the title bar so we set no title bar true and when we run it now we're going to end up with a window that has no title bar well without the title bar when you click on it there's nothing to click to move it right so we need to add another parameter to do that and that is the grab any where parameter right so now when we run it we have a window that has no title bar but we can grab it anywhere and move it around on our screen so already we got a little bit nicer looking window right uh, another thing that you can do to spice up your windows uh, is in particular if you want to make it like a rain meter thing so that it looks good sitting on a, a background is use the alpha channel so let's set the alpha channel to 0.8 it uh, alpha channel is the transparency for the window here you can see that you can see through the window and so it looks a, a little bit lighter looking on your desktop you can make that even lower uh, but it's a way of setting transparency and making your window kind of fade into the background of whatever it's sitting on top of and in my case it's a black desktop uh, buttons are always a sore point for people and I, I get it i sort of understand where if you're looking for something fancier then maybe you don't like these rectangular buttons and if that's the case then it's time to bring in your own buttons and you can do that pretty easily by using some helper programs uh, and using the uh, image parameters for things like buttons i'm going to show you a technique here though that uses the image element instead of the button element um, what we'll do is use um, a button that is a toggle button so there'll be a pair of them uh, let me pull them up and so here is a pair of toggle buttons uh, and in fact, here's an exit button that we can use as well um, I like Python GUI programs that are self-contained if you distribute uh, this little test program and you use these buttons then you've got these three buttons images ping that you need to keep with your .py file and if you don't turn it into an exe and I, I, I'm not a particular fan of doing that I like to put them inside of the .py file and there are a couple couple of uh, programs that come with PySimple GUI in the demos section that help you do that um, and they uh, it's the type of image that goes into your files are called base 64 that's the encoding that you use and you can put them as variables there are two programs one encodes individual images the other encodes a whole folder at a time if we look at um, the, the, the demo programs, you'll find demo base 64 as the beginning, and there's an image in an image source encoder, uh, uh, in, in image single encoder, pardon me. Uh, I'm going to use the single encoder, and uh, in fact, let's, let's pull this up. 
Uh, it's a big program. That's all there is to it. And it uses the front end techniques that we talked about earlier, where you call pop up get file to begin the program. So when I run this program, it's going to ask for an image to be encoded. And then it says it's going to place it on the clipboard. So what I need to do is come over here and let's take the bot, the off button. I'm going to paste the address of it here and hit OK. And it says that it copied it to the clipboard. So I go back to my source file and here I'm going to say toggle off is equal to that which is uh, our encoded button and uh, I've got PyCharm where it wraps the lines don't worry about the length so much if we run that program again single image encoder I'm going to grab this button on and put it in there Oops, the button on and we'll and you can also, of course, use the browse button and it will uh, browse to wherever it is. And, but I just like to copy and paste it sometimes much quicker. So I copied and pasted that. And uh, now it's on the clipboard. Come back over to here and we're going to say this was toggle on was that. Now I had said that we're going to use an image element. So let's uh, take these buttons and comment them out. So check this out. You can comment out rows in your layout. So now when I run this program, it won't have um, these buttons. So let's let's do our toggles. So we're going to have an image element. And for images, do a control P to get the list of uh, options. And a control Q brings up these over here. And it's data is the one we're looking for. So data equals toggle. We'll say toggle off to start. Let's set ourselves a, a flag called uh, toggle is on and we'll set it to false because it's off. So um, actually let's leave um, the exit button on for the time being so that we can exit program. When we run this now, we will see an image uh, with an off button shown. Okay, exit goes away. Let's get rid of this alpha channel. Uh, now to, we wanna make it so that when we click that image, it toggles the button. And the way to get events back when an image is clicked is we enable the events for that image. So if we set enable events true, then we're going to get an event equals whatever this key is. Let's call this uh, I for image. Let's get rid of this row here that does the text. So uh, now when someone clicks uh, the image, we're going to go get an event uh, with a, with a dash I, right? And we've said that we want, what we want it to do is update that same element. So let's copy this. I just happen to have in that template uh, an update. So we're going to update the image. And I know that, um, but because I, I read the documentation for the image element, uh, I, I, I know that the parameter is called data. And to change it, um, we're going to say toggle uh, on if toggle is on is true, else toggle off. So I've used uh, uh, a turn, turn expression here so that um, it will choose one of those two depending on what toggle so toggle is on, we're going to say it's not toggle is on. So that will toggle it back and forth. Now, when we run this, we should see it off. When I click it, it goes to on. When I click it again, it goes off. So that's a nice looking button, right? And uh, it's in the program so that we don't have to carry it around. Um, and let's do something about this exit button now. Let's say for exit, um, we're going to run the same conversion. So we're going to do a single image. Come over here and let's get our exit button. Paste it in there. Awesome. Put it on the clipboard. Now we're going to come back to our lessons. And we're going to say exit button is equal to that encoded thing. Now down here, 
let's make exit the text be the key because we're not going to have text we're going to have a button image now and when i pull up troll q here you will see um looking through here there is image file name we could use the file but there's image data so that's what we will use is image data equals what did i call it exit button right um, now let's run this and what you'll see is there's still a button there for it um, it's raised and because the image that I'm using is a ping image, it has some transparent portions and those transparent portions are showing through. And um, the button is this other color of red. It doesn't match the background and we probably want it to match the background, right? So the way to do that is by changing the button color. So uh, button color is a parameter and it takes two colors. And what we want to set it to is, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put these on separate lines, even though I told you not to do that, but I wanna make this clear. Button colors come in, there, there's in tuples. And the way to remember it is to use the word on as the comma. So it's some color on some other color. And in this case, we want the background color for this theme. So it's the theme background color uh, as the text. And let's also use it as the um, the color of the button itself. So now if we run it, the color that is used for the, the background for the window is on the button. Now you see also that there's still a button looking thing there, it's raised. So we want to set the border width to be zero in that case. So now let's look at it again and we have an exit button and it does move. It, it, uh, it, when you click it, notice it does move, unlike toggle button. So it is a real button. Uh, it's exiting the program because I have a key called exit. And it's set here, if the event is exit, it's going to break. Uh, remember that I can grab this window anywhere and move it around. Uh, and to show you that this theme thing works, let's say that we want uh, light blue three. I have no idea what this is going to look like. I hope it looks okay. Look at that. It looks fine. The, the button turned out good. It blends with the background and it blends with the background because I said use theme background color. Uh, let me pull back up the documentation again. There is a section on beautifying windows. There's some examples. These may not be the most beautiful to you, but um, it's to show you that to enter windows, uh, aren't necessarily ugly. You can do some pretty cool things with Tkinter. Um, the, the cookbook uh, also goes through how to how to use themes. Um, there's um, uh, like I said, 140 of them or something. So spend a little time and make your windows look beautiful. Um, Tkinter can do a fine job of making nice looking windows, and it's on you to make that happen. Thank you for watching. I hope that you're getting as much enjoyment out of PySimple GUI as I have in creating it. Be safe.